Um, I had a question around how do you plan on, um, so as, as companies grow and you get larger websites and larger, more traffic and larger deployments, they tend to have more needs for customized architectures, components, et cetera. Uh, how do you plan on, uh, you know, do you plan growing with your customers? Do you plan on transitioning them out? How do you plan on addressing that? Thank you. You actually brought up one of the amazing things that PHP Fog offers that's not been available. Before you started on something like GoDaddy, shared hosting, and you couldn't move up. We provide a system that you can start with a sh free shared hosting layer and seamlessly migrate up as your needs progress. So you can start with shared, move to dedicated, move to a dedicated uh, database system, and let's say it gets even bigger. Let's say you're really blowing up. We have systems and companies signed up where they have given us their credentials to their AWS or Rackspace or GoGrid account. It doesn't matter, we are platform agnostic, one of the things we learned not to do from Heroku. And uh, we can actually manage their entire cloud for them. So you get all the benefits, but you can have custom pieces that aren't available for the thousands of other people that are using the system in the more uh, micro version. Okay. Is there a uh, like expected sort of ceiling to the size of your customers, or, or can it go to like you know Zynga size? Absolutely, that's another great question. Uh, a lot of people ask me, is the next Facebook going to be built on PHP Fog? Maybe not today, but I think that is absolutely where the industry is going as platform as a service. The idea is that more and more companies need to focus on their core value propositions to their users. You don't think of uh, a company like Facebook as being such a great server provider. They they've have, have, have had to build all this in-house expertise to do the, all this server farms. But that's not what you get, that's not your value, that's not what uh, they provide to you. More and more companies like Facebook and Zynga are going to be able to focus on just what provides value to their users. And I'm very excited about that. I, I wouldn't pile on, to that, pile on to that question. We talked a little bit about how does a company get from, I get how you can get from, hey, I'm a startup and I go from the free to scaling all the way up. How does a bigger company enter into this space with you? How do we make that transition? Great question. So that is one of the things that we're working towards. It's a uh, longer term vision. And there are awesome tools being developed right now. Uh, the new one from VMware with Cloud Foundry, uh, the OpenStack stuff that's going on. All of these provide APIs for places that have built in infrastructure. So there are, there are companies that have thousands of, they've, they've invested a lot of time and effort building their infrastructure, and you can't just throw that away. You can't just say, okay, I'm gonna go to Amazon now and screw whatever that was there before. But there are tools being built so that you can have API access similar to the cloud public APIs, and we are working towards being able to uh, access those tools and provide similar management and similar platform scaling uh, in the private cloud arena. So that's definitely the direction where I see things going with that. Um, maybe you can address a previous presenter who has just a different philosophy on platform as a service, just but talking about your service and being single language focused and what does that mean when you get developers, which is accurate, that are using multiple languages? How are they gonna, do you envision having, you know, all these platform as service stacked up side by side? Yeah, uh, a few great questions there. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing is taking notes, watching fantastic companies that I really respect and seeing what made them so great. When Amazon started, many of you might remember, all they did was books. They didn't do anything but books and they did books fantastic, better than anyone. That's what we're doing. We're doing PHP right now better than anyone and that's really giving us a great reputation. It's helping build viral growth that's really exploding. And we plan to, like Amazon, expand. But right now, we're just focused on making the best user experience and building our reputation on that. Um, the, uh, the user, right? I mean, like, is yes, it, yes, is it gonna... that's right. So the other part of that question was the user. So there are over 20 million PHP sites out there, and the vast, vast majority of them do not have many disparate uh, technologies. Many of them, especially in the PHP world, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, all of these different frameworks that build websites. Small and medium businesses don't need to 
pick and choose different technologies all the time, although we do support some of those technologies uh, and are working to add more and more. We're really focused on really enabling uh, great companies to start and get moving very quickly. Okay. Uh, I have a question about your SLA. So you, uh, you code an SLA up there. What does your SLA mean considering you have a lot of different providers underneath you that you're using that have themselves their own different SLAs? Like for example, Amazon has their SLA. Other providers have their different. What, what does your 99, 49 to 9 SLA mean? Yeah, so this is something that I've been having conversations with my customers about. What does an SLA mean to my customers? And there are two parts to an SLA. There's the real part, which is the financial part. So traditionally, and what, what you get when you're going with Amazon SLAs or Rackspace SLAs is guarantees that if they go down, we will refund you a percentage of what you paid us. That's all fine and good, and that's part of what an SLA is. And so we also will refund based on downtime. Uh, however, what they really care about is we don't want to go down. How are you going to ensure that we don't go down? And so we're, we're making sure that we build a platform that there's redundancy at every level. We have an N-tier stack that has separate parts for load balancing, caching, separate application servers, separate database, so that there can be redundancy and failover at every level. And that's something that shared hosting doesn't give you. It's hard to do in dedicated hosting. I guess my question is, what do you define then um, downtime in that? Because like, if you say, like, um, are you going to then count, you know, say I have a service I'm hosting on PHP Fog and it's, you know, it's deployed to either, you know, Rackspace or Amazon and there's an outage at one of those providers. Does that count against the SLA? Yes, it does. Okay. So is your SLA then basically effectively lower than any of the existing provider SLAs as a result? Um, not necessarily. Uh, it, we can, because the providers have SLAs, uh, they can have downtime, but our platform is agnostic. We can have multiple people underneath it. And for people that need four nines, we can build an infrastructure that works on multiple platforms, has multiple availability zones, not just within Amazon, but can be failed over to different locations. Okay. I think we're going to have to cut it off there because I don't know if you'll get enough time for another answer in if we got another question. What, about, well what about magic trick? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Done.